whether it's telephone, internet, or television customers in small and rural locations across 24 states, they rely on Frontier Communications in order to provide for their needs. Now, Frontier struck an $8.5 billion deal in May to triple its access lines. That was a purchase deal from Verizon, and it hopes for an even bigger role in broadband, thanks to federal stimulus programs, perhaps. Maggie Wilderotter is the CEO, and F Frontier, just as a note, exceeded Wall Street's estimates for third quarter earnings that came out today. Maggie, congratulations. That's very good news. Thank you so much. So what is this whole idea of access lines? Explain to people sort of the notion of access lines, and they are declining in popularity, so you've got to work hard to kind of replace those access lines. Well, we look at the business as a communication services business, of which phone lines into the home for local service is just one of the services that we provide. And what we really want to focus on, though, is the wallet share or the revenue per household. That's the most important thing. Access lines is one component of that. But in addition to local service, there's long distance services that we offer. There's broadband services, so high speed internet access. And we have a partnership with the Dish Network for video as well. So we'll sell bundles of products and services to our customers, both residential customers and business customers. Some of the access line declines that have taken place over the last several years are by design. For example, we have upgraded many customers that were on dial-up broadband to high-speed internet broadband. And when you do that, you remove the phone line from the equation because they have direct access to the broadband line. In addition to that, as businesses look to upgrade their capabilities for both voice and data, we'll put larger pipes into businesses and we'll remove access lines out of the equation. So some of the changeover of access lines, we do ourselves. We also know there's a phenomena for people that want to just use cell phones in certain situations, and we also have competitive services uh, in our markets as well. But we fight every single day to keep every customer on service, to deliver a great customer experience, and over the last five years, we've continued to grow revenue per household and revenue per business. Now, one of the ways you're growing revenue is you made that acquisition. You bought a whole bunch of access lines. It sounds small, I know, but eight and a half billion dollars is not a small deal. Uh, from Verizon, how can can you give us an update on that deal? Yes, we're in the process of going through regulatory approval to get the deal closed. We're very pleased that our shareholders overwhelmingly approved the transaction just last week. And we also got three states approve the transaction. Uh, we had Nevada, South Carolina, and California. We have six more states to approve the transaction, and we're working on those processes today. And then we're still waiting for FCC approval that we think will take place in the next several months as well. But once we get the approval, we see huge growth opportunities in these Verizon markets. These are predominantly rural locations. They don't have a lot of broadband in these markets today. In our frontier footprint, we have 92% reach. So 92% of all the households and businesses can get access to broadband from us. And in that case, in the rural networks, not having a lot of competition would be good for frontier communications. Absolutely. I want to thank you very much, Maggie Wilderotter, coming in and sharing your thoughts about the telecommunications industry.